Hey, hello, hi, welcome back to another voiceover edition. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about Germany post-World War II. So if you are ready, buckle in. It is an unfortunate reality that much of what befell Germany in the aftermath of the Nazi regime is not told through the lens of the fractured Germanic experience, but instead through the lens of the Allied powers as they orchestrated various economic, social, and political reforms in the late 1940s. It is therefore primarily through this lens of the Allied powers that the European post-war ideas of Germany shall be explored in today's video, as well as what it means to assert that the German post-war identity as a nation more so than as a people is inextricably bound to the reconstruction of Europe after World War II. Who am I? I don't know. I guess I have a lot of things to ponder. Before World War II came to a close in 1945, it, quote, had become the most destructive conflict in human history with 55 million dead, continents had been ravaged, great cities laid to waste, and a tidal wave of destruction left behind a landscape of unparalleled human suffering, end quote. The Allied powers comprised of all the wartime members of the United Nations, especially the continental European countries that had been under German occupation, were, quote, determined to play an active role in transforming the German state into a peaceful democratic state that would never again threaten Europe Europe with military force, end quote. With some going so far as to argue that Germany should never even be given full sovereignty. Fearing the potential for a military uprising, the European members of the United Nations, as well as the United States, refused to accept negotiations of any kind with regards to Germany's surrender. The Allies, quote, did not understand Hitler's motivations for expansion and therefore concluded that the Germans were committed to aggression, and as such, peace could only be ensured by fundamental reform of German government and society, end quote. Post-war Germany was, at this point, the stray dog whose actions were too feral to predict, nor trust in the eyes of post-war Europe. While politicians were devoted to creating, quote, a structure in Europe whereby war was literally impossible, end quote, the attempt to discover from whence the evil of the German problem originated colored the way post-war Europe enacted the various German reconstruction policies. Roosevelt, for example, argued that the source of evil was not with, quote, just Hitler or the Nazis, but with the whole of German society, end quote, noting in a letter to the Joint Chiefs of Staff that, quote, a somewhat long study and personal experience in and out of Germany leads me to believe that German philosophy cannot be changed by decree, law, or military order, end quote. Churchill, on the other hand, believed the root of the evil was Hitler, the Nazi party, and Prussia rather than the German people, resulting in a disunited approach to the rebuilding of post-war Germany. In Christian Glossner's The Making of the German Postwar Economy, Political Communication and Public Reception of the Social Market Economy After World War II, oh my god, what a long title. <laughs> The disunity is briefly highlighted when discussing how the aforementioned demand for unconditional surrender and compliance evolved through discourse at the varying conferences at which the end of the war was planned. The Casablanca Conference in 1943 was the first opportunity the Allies had to synthesize a policy of surrender for Germany. It was not until the Yalta Conference and Potsdam Agreement in 1945 that the notion of unconditional surrender was agreed upon as the Allies' best course of action. At the Yalta Conference, the Allied powers were able to agree upon carving up Germany into four occupation zones, solidifying the impression that post-war Europe was very concerned with a unified, potentially powerful Germany. The Potsdam Agreement, held six months later, provided the roadmap to achieve the goals laid out in the Yalta Conference, including plans to decentralize, denazify, and democratize Germany. Furthermore, the Allies agreed upon the division of Berlin and Vienna, the prosecution of Nazi war criminals, and a further shortening of the German borders by shifting the eastern border westward. The Potsdam Agreement, however, did provide a modicum of power back to the German people in the reconstruction efforts through the installation of county-level seats of governmental power. Over time, these efforts did increase to a limited amount of power at the federal level. By including the German people in the reconstruction efforts, the Allied powers were hoping to instill a sense of personal investment that would keep the German people less likely to gather in a grassroots effort to overthrow their occupying forces. A European Germany, it was said by Thomas Mann, quote, is the only way to avert a German Europe, end quote. And for Germany to become a European Germany was less a product of the accrual and reorganization of power as it was for France and Britain, and more a question of identity. Post-war Germany was, to put it simply, facing an identity crisis. Post-war Germany's lack of national self-confidence began with the simultaneous defeat and liberation of the German people by the Allied powers in 1945. 
The expectation, both within the German consciousness and through the actions of the Allied powers, was that the unification of Germany as well as the economic and social rebuilding would be external by nature. As such, German identity was therefore made to be inextricably tied with the rebuilding and unification of Europe. Germany, as the German people once knew it, was no longer. By the end of the war, Germany was utterly defeated. Quote, the last years of conflict severely damaged the state's infrastructure, end quote. In the early years of Reconstruction, Germany was, quote, a nation of victims, end quote, wholly reliant on the occupying forces by design, facing economic disarray and food shortages. Over time, however, quote, domestic reform in Germany and elsewhere unlocked the integration process that helped establish what Friedrich Hayek called the economic conditions of interstate federalism, end quote. Germany was eager to change its political trajectory, rejecting essentially anything that could be associated with the Nazi regime, encouraging the citizens to become more invested and active in their local political communities. Economically, the implementation of a social market economy allowed for the slow recovery of a devastated post-war economy. Over the years, various economic committees and unions were set up within Germany and supranationally, including the European coal and steel community, which proved to be a turning point for Germany's economic rebuilding. Seeing the ECSC as a way to remove unilateral control of the coal and steel production by the International Authority of the Ruhr, the ECSC would allow for an increased steel and iron output, which would, Germany hoped, put them back on a more even economic ground with France. The ECSC provided the necessary step forward for economic stability for Western Germany, further tying Germany's identity with the reconstruction of Europe. There is no doubt that World War II was, quote, the worst war in history, spreading death, destruction, and poverty throughout Europe and beyond, end quote. The European post-war ideas of Germany were primarily and understandably driven by the fear of a potential for a repeat of recent history. By focusing on occupation and wholesale control over German economic, political, and social reformations, Europe plainly viewed Germany as an ongoing threat for peace, going so far as to orchestrate a program of integration to make war as impossible as possible, which was the only acceptable conclusion to such a devastating event in the eyes of the victors. Germany ultimately was divided into four occupied states, and reparations began after the Potsdam Agreement in late 1945. Germany's identity was fractured, with a lack of national self-confidence placed on the discordant experience of being both freed and subjugated immediately preceding the war. Over time, Germany was able to participate more locally and at the federal level, and as their economy recovered, Germany was able to become more integrated into the international European scene. Ultimately, the entrance into the supranational community is one of their primary stepping points at which they began to truly recover. However, the supranational community is just one example of how post-war Germany's identity was bound to the construction of Europe, just as the occupied and reduced state of Germany ensured that any reconstruction would be in line with the rest of Europe's construction. Thank you all for joining me today. I really enjoyed this video. I have a special place in my heart for German history. Um, I recently spent a little bit of time there, and I cannot wait to go back. Um, German history is just so interesting, and there's so much more to it than just the Nazi regime, that era. Uh, so if you're interested in more topics about Germany and their history, please let me know. I would love for an opportunity and a reason to do some more research. Um, as always, if you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up, and I am also open to any suggestions you may have. And I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye. Fundamental reform of governmental government. Governmental government.